July is my first month here, and this is my first sermon here with you. I'm grateful to everyone. I'm grateful for the kind words, the cards, the notes, the emails, the fruits and vegetables left by the door at my house. I'm grateful for all of it. It's been a very warm welcome, and I do appreciate it. I also want us to remember once again David, who is not here with us, David, our pastor. He is on vacation, and we want to remember him in prayer. So he comes back to us renewed. So today, I want to continue for us to get to know one another. And in part, I'm going to do that through this message, through this sermon. You will learn a bit more about me through Star Trek. I'm a Trekkie. A bit on my origins in New York. That's Queens, New York. And the five practices. You remember those five practices? Sounds familiar. So how to begin? Hmm. Can anything good come out of James T. Kirk from Star Trek? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Diane Glaive? And finally, can anything good come out of Ingemar Church? Ah, Star Trek. I know somebody's saying, what? Well, I'm thinking of the film Star Trek. It's a 2009 reboot of the Star Trek franchise that originated in the 1960s. Anybody remember the series from the 1960s? I love those old, old, old television shows. I love watching them repeatedly. A scene from the film got me thinking about the phrase, can anything good come out of? Are you all with me? The end of one scene connects to can anything good come out of. After a long car chase, a robot cop, an artificial intelligence says, citizen, what is your name? A scrawny, undeveloped kid, he's 12 years old, he responds with rebellious attitude saying, James Tiberius Kirk. Anyone ever heard that name before watching the Star Trek series? Familiar with it? Okay. So keeping that exchange in mind of a police officer and a preteen, can anything good come out of James T. Kirk? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Diane Glaive? And finally, can anything good come out of Ingemar Church? So back to the scene, the scene from Star Trek. Let's find out what got James Tiberius Kirk in trouble with the police in the first place. I want to know, can anything good come out of James T. Kirk? Imagine little James T. at the wheel of his stepfather's red convertible. James, T., James T.'s stepfather calls by cell phone saying, get back home. The stepfather then shifts to threat saying, when your mother comes back from off planet, you are going to get it. And it sound a little familiar? The, step, the stepdad closes with something that I've heard myself. Um, you live in my house, buddy. The boy, he pulls some levers of the rag top and he pops it right off and it falls behind the car in the dust, into the road. Now, what do you think James D. did in terms of this conversation with his stepfather? You think they had like a long, loving conversation? Nope. James T. cuts the call off and he turns on the radio. And of course, well, of course for me, the Beastie Boys are playing on the radio and the song is Sabotage. And if you know anything about the song, it's based in rap, it's laid on a rock and roll track. And for me, that song is perfect for a rebellious preteen who's stealing a car for a joyride. Nothing goes better 
with this sort of thing than rock and roll and rap. I can hear the song playing in my head. So I ask again, can anything good come out of James T. Kirk on Star Trek? Now back to the scene. The robocop sees James T. speeding in the convertible. The cop pulls close to the car and says, citizen, pull over. What do you think James T. did? You think he pulled over? He floored it, okay, he floored the pedal. The chase, it ends at a cliff. James T., remember he's a little boy, he's 12 years old, little tiny thing. He jumps out of the car, the car goes over the cliff, and the boy hangs on the cliff, on the edge of the cliff. He eventually ends up climbing up. So I say again, can anything good come from James T. Kirk? If you watched anything Star Trek featuring James Tiberius Kirk, you know much good comes from the captain of the Starship Enterprise. That's what he grew into from this rebellious 12-year-old. He had a strong, moral, ethical-centered, though flawed in many ways, including getting with green women. He saved people, he saved species, he saved planets. Yes. I love Star Trek. So some good does come from James T. Kirk. This phrase, can anything good, does come out of Scripture. Yes, Scripture started the can anything good conversation for Christians. In John 1, 43, Jesus was starting his ministry on the road, and he was deemed a nobody. I can imagine early on when Jesus' name was mentioned, most responded with, who? Jesus was almost famous at this early point in what would become the most profound faith tradition and ministry on this planet. So how about we start with the first verse? I love the King James Version. I'm not going to make you suffer through the whole thing, but I'm going to read the first verse out of the King James Version. And it says, verse 43, the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, follow me. Findeth, saith, key words, Jesus says, follow me. So we will focus, we already have focused on the new King James Version that sounds a bit more 21st century. And the catchphrase is, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And that comes out of John 1, verse 46. So here's the story behind the verse. Jesus found Philip. He, Philip, he would later become a disciple, saying, follow me, which ultimately meant follow Jesus' teaching, including those on salvation. Philip he turned around and he reached out to Nathaniel and did the same thing, following Jesus' example or model. You know, Nathaniel thought that was hilarious. I mean, his tone, I can imagine it, it was, can anything good come out of Nazareth when told about Jesus? Nathaniel was referring to Jesus. You see, Jesus, he came from the wrong side of the tracks. He came from Nazareth part of Galilee, which is in northern Israel. Neither Nazareth or Galilee were places to brag about, but Galileans in general look down on Nazarenes. It's the same way here in Pittsburgh. Some people will say, that's one of the better neighborhoods. Or someone else will say, I would never, ever, ever, live there. The Messiah couldn't possibly come out of such a lowly place like Nazareth. But that's what's so wonderful about this story. Jesus was a common person. He was of common birth. Yet he is and he was the Messiah, the prophecy that was waiting to be fulfilled among the Jews. Jesus is and was the physical incarnation of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. 
So in response to, can anything good come out of Nazareth, the answer is yes. So consider part of my story in the context of James T. and Jesus. Can anything good come out of Diane Glaive? You know, I'm not ashamed of where I come from. I come from Queens, New York. Though many people that I meet, they often say they come from Manhattan, the better borough, although they're from Queens. And eventually I end up teasing out. I'm like, your accent, it does sound like it comes from Queens. I'm from Queens. And they'll eventually cop to the fact that they're from Queens. But a lot of people are ashamed. They say, I'm from Manhattan. I'm not from Manhattan. I'm from Queens. There goes my Queens attitude. <laughs> when I watch some of Jay-Z's, he's a rapper, some of his earlier videos in Brooklyn, New York, it reminds me of how dark, hard, and grim many of the boroughs are like. And there's some beautiful things about the boroughs. It's all not negative, like Brooklyn, the Bronx, and yes, Queens. Jesus and I could definitely compare notes on Nazareth versus Queens, New York. So some of my stories. I lived in Queens, but I commuted by subway or by rail to Manhattan to go to work. I remember coming back to Queens, and a drug dealer often waited for me at the bus stop and walked me home to make sure that I got home safely after dark. Shh, don't tell my parents. They don't know this story, but it's going to be on the internet, I suppose. <laughs> I also remember when I walked in the park near my house, crack vials with candy-colored stoppers crunched under my feet. Yep. That's where I came from. I was a little like James T. also, where I would hurtle headlong into danger. Danger, it didn't have to find me. I have many other stories about queens. You can take the girl out of queens, but you can't take the queens out of the girl. I can't say that I left queens behind, because it's always there. The good parts and the bad parts and they play like a backdrop in a film for me or in a play. The good is how strong people are and were. The not so good has kept me grounded. Now given the backdrop, I went on to get a PhD. If my parents had, not sent, me to, had sent me to the local public school a mile from my house, my narrative, my story might have been different. I went on to seminary, and I'm now a pastor. Looking back on the times, I was often in danger, and I wonder sometimes how I got here. So I ask, can anything good come of Diane Glaive? As a community of Ingemar Church, you all ultimately decide. I pray, as we live in God's grace, that you too will be gracious to me with all of my flaws. I want you to decide whether or not can anything good come of Diane Glaive. Okay, so now I'm gonna steal a page from the David Streets playbook. <laughs> Don't tell him, that's just between all 150 of us. Let's go a step beyond, can anything good come out of? I'll go further into today's scripture in a moment. But let's think about this. Which of the five practices of fruitful congregation applies to the following? Maybe you can say it with me. Radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, and extravagant generosity. Thank you. When I recounted Philip and Nathaniel's conversation about can anything good come out of Nazareth, I left out the closer in the passage, which is incredibly, critically important. Philip said to Nathaniel, come and see, much like Jesus did with Philip. And that's what we should be doing. <coughs> we should be beckoning people, calling them to come and see, sharing about the gospel, we should be encouraging others to come and see, to have a personal relationship with Christ. It's what we focus on here at Ingemar Church through our vision. So here is how it goes. 
<coughs> we believe that God is calling our church to make lives better and transform the world by valuing each person and guiding them into personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Sounds like what Jesus and Philip did. It's what Philip did with Nathaniel. So back to the five practices. Let's look at which ones tie into what Jesus and Philip and Nathaniel were doing. The first one is risk-taking mission and service. And that's because Jesus and Philip reached out to Nathaniel. And then there's intentional faith development. <coughs> because Jesus and Philip were in the very first stages of teaching Nathaniel about the Christian faith. So there's James T. Kirk. There's Jesus of Nazareth. There's me, Diane Glaive. I'm not comparing myself to Jesus. And now there's you, Ingemar Church. Can anything good come out of Ingemar Church? Ministries are already in place that serve so many people here, serve people in terms of outreach. And this takes us back to risk-taking mission and service of the five practices. This church, Ingemar Church, is filled with caring, loving people. So, can anything good come out of Ingemar Church? You don't need to answer that. I will. The answer is emphatically yes. Let's continue to share the gospel as did Jesus, Philip, and Nathaniel as we continue to practice intentional faith development. Can anything good? <laughs>